When we hear the word vacation, the first thing that pops up in our brains is probably sunny beaches and bikinis, glittering ski slopes, outstretched highways, or theme parks, right? Have you ever thought about cosmic journeys or vistas defined by the long arc of the Earth's surface? That sounds impossible, right? But that might be a reality before we know it. Sure, Mars or the Moon might be pretty scary for us, but what if it's just low Earth orbit? Well, SpaceX is collaborating with NASA on an integrated low-Earth orbit architecture that'll provide a growing portfolio of technology with near-term Dragon evolution and concurrent Starship development. A journey into space could be the trip of a lifetime. We'll get into all this in today's episode of Alpha Tech. In a significant move to foster innovation and advance the future of human spaceflight and the U.S. commercial low-Earth orbit economy, NASA has announced the second Collaborations for Commercial Space Capabilities 2 initiative, or CCSC2, and is partnered with seven American companies. When going through the proposals, NASA checked out the relevance towards achieving the agency's goals and the overall feasibility of each. Each company will be putting forth its own costs into their projects. What's interesting is that SpaceX's proposal that was selected by NASA sees the use of an integrated low-Earth orbit architecture featuring the company's super-heavy-lift Starship vehicle as a focal point. This architecture includes Starship as a means of transportation and an in-space LEO destination element that's helped out by the super-heavy booster, the Dragon spacecraft, and SpaceX's Starlink satellite internet constellation, plus other items such as crew and cargo transport and communications. Having Starship serve as a destination implies that SpaceX plans to use it as an LEO outpost, given its large internal volume and the future ability to embark on long-duration missions. Side-by-side, side, SpaceX Starships are way bigger than the ISS. Their size is similar to the external fuel tank of the retired space shuttle. SpaceX is so large and also so cost-effective that it could be a station itself, said Chad Anderson, founder and managing capital of Space Capital, during a session of the Financial Times Investing in Space conference that was held earlier this month. He suggested that it could disrupt business models for other commercial space stations. An example he gave was a hotel company outfitting the interior of Starship for customers. They could launch a group of people and stay however long they want with all the accommodations they want, and they could do it all for less than the cost of one seat to the space station a day. In the past, proposals for space stations were based on the external fuel tank, which would have been challenging to construct. However, the steel construction of SpaceX Starship offers ease in welding, cutting, and modifying, making the construction process much more manageable. As a result, the development of space stations becomes more feasible and cost-effective. Space radiation poses a significant challenge for astronauts in space. However, computations show that orbits below approximately 500 kilometers near the equator experience significantly low radiation levels, and that reduces the need for extensive shielding. By strategically placing a giant wheel of rotating SpaceX starships in such an orbit, it then becomes possible to generate artificial gravity that's equal to one gravity. On top of that, this location would provide a safe radiation environment for the occupants. With plenty of volume available within the starships, supplies can be stacked around the hull. This provides additional radiation protection. Even with one meter thick shielding, a 900 cubic meter volume would retain 90% of its interior space, offering substantial living and working areas for the astronauts. One of the remarkable advantages of SpaceX Starships is their affordability. With a price tag of approximately $2 million per starship, a fleet of 50 starships would only cost $1 billion. Such a space station, with a volume of 100 times greater than the ISS, could accommodate up to 350 people, based on the standards set by the ISS. It's worth noting that the ISS was originally designed to support seven people, but temporarily hosted a record of nine individuals during a handover in 2009. With that in mind, a space station based on giant starships with a capacity of 450 occupants during surges would be super cost-effective, with an estimated total cost of around $2 billion. And the result? Space travel will no longer remain exclusive to billionaires. Instead, it becomes an opportunity accessible for everyday Joes. Among the companies receiving CCSC2 agreements is Blue Origin, that company will use the agreement to work on an integrated commercial space transportation capability that ensures safe, affordable, and high-frequency U.S. access to orbit for their crew and other missions. The statement didn't provide any other details, and Blue Origin did not immediately respond to questions about these plans. 
While rather vague, this statement does suggest Blue Origin's working on a crewed spacecraft. The company started to work on such a vehicle more than 10 years ago with two funded Space Act agreements in the initial phases of NASA's commercial crew development program. Those awards supported initial designs of what the company called a space vehicle, a design intended for launch initially on the Atlas V. Blue Origin elected not to compete in later phases of the program. Sierra Space is also part of this award. The company is collaborating with NASA for the development of the company's commercial low-Earth orbit ecosystem, including next-gen space transport, in-space infrastructure, and expandable space facilities. Through the agreement, Sierra Space provides NASA with valuable insight and collaboration into their crewed Dream Chaser space plane, new commercial space station architectures, and in-space logistics, plus refueling and servicing systems. NASA will then advance the deployment of Sierra Space's platform and ecosystem by providing access to facilities and support for environmental and crew system testing, tools, and software. Sierra Space is building the in-space infrastructure and end-to-end -end business platform to accelerate the new space economy, said Tom Weiss, Sierra Space CEO. This agreement with NASA enables active collaboration to share our expertise and finding as we conduct the formative work that will open the door to extended human missions to space. They're building the technology, business platform, and ecosystem to power the new space economy, providing products and services to both government and commercial customers. And that means there will be a competitive U.S. commercial space economy that's vital to long-term U.S. interests. This agreement provides collaboration and knowledge sharing from NASA to a new generation of space pioneers building our low-Earth orbit or LEO ecosystem. Sierra Space's open architecture enables the creation of a robust LEO commercial ecosystem and the catalyst for breakthrough innovations in biotech, human health, telecom, computing, advanced materials, and clean energy. Think Orbital received an agreement to refine its plans for large in-space platforms for research, manufacturing, and crude applications. VAST will work with NASA to support its plans announced in May for the Haven 1 module and crewed missions to it. Other CCSC2 awards went to Northrop Grumman for an autonomous spacecraft called Persistent Platform based on its Cygnus vehicle for commercial research and manufacturing and a special aerospace services for an in-space servicing technology called the Autonomous Maneuvering Unit. The CCSC2 agreements come nine years after the first such agreements that NASA made with four companies. Final Frontier Design received an award to work on a pressure suit, Orbital ATK, now part of Northrop Grumman, received one for its mission extension vehicle satellite servicing spacecraft. SpaceX for technologies that are needed for deep space missions that included methane oxygen propulsion that will be used on Starship. And then there's United Launch Alliance for a variety of technologies for its Vulcan launch vehicle. Phil McAllister, director of commercial spaceflight over at NASA headquarters in D.C., said, It's great to see companies invest their own capital toward innovative commercial space capabilities, and we've seen how these type of partnerships benefit both the private sector and NASA. The companies can leverage NASA's vast knowledge and experience, and the agency can be a customer for the capabilities included in the agreements in the future. Ultimately, these agreements will foster more competition for services and more providers for innovative space capabilities. And that'll do it for today's episode. Don't forget to share your ideas in the comments section below. Your support motivates us to create more of these quality videos. And for that, we thank you so much for watching and hope to see you next time. Goodbye.